this little boombox has been floating around my shop for the better part of a decade. And it normally plugs in to the outlet just like anything else, but I've converted it to run off of my battery drill batteries. Giving it an auxiliary plug like this for direct current, I wouldn't exactly call easy, but it's incredibly useful. And it's extremely efficient. This is a nice little thing to have in the shop, and it even plays USBs. So you can just put your music right into its brain. Now, of course, a modification like this may not be for everybody, but it's certainly for those of you like me that have an entire lineup of battery tools. And so, in this video, I'll take you through what I did to be able to do this. Starting from scratch, the two things you'll need are one of these and a step-down converter. The idea for this came from Jeremy Cook. Special thanks to him. If you're not familiar with his YouTube channel, check it out. He's more technologically um, proficient than I am. Although we've become buddies over the years, we have different approaches to making things. Uh, for example, he made a clock that uses gears and fancy technology that's like magic to me to tell the time in two places. In contrast to the clock that I've just been tinkering with, which requires a little bit less technological proficiency. In case you want to reproduce exactly what you're seeing here, there's the model number you'll need. I think both of mine were factory refurbished. You can save a good deal of money by doing it that way. You will also need one of these. It's called a buck converter. And you'll also have to attach its heat sink. They come separate. More on that in a bit. These only cost about 10 bucks for two after shipping. My personal opinion of this product in just a few seconds, eh, it does pretty well. It does what I want. It has a pretty good sound. It plays CDs. And you can actually record a CD onto your USB with it. And the two jacks are really convenient because I can actually use this to hook it up to my laptop so that I can play YouTube audio right in here through this. My one big complaint about this model is that when you insert the USB drive, it takes a long time to load. But what do you want? It works. The big reason that I like one of these is because it fits nicely on the back of a quad and I can take it out to the fire or out back or when I'm working outside. And that is the main reason that I wanted this because it's nice and secure, but it can get yanked out without destroying anything. Super simple was the idea. Okay, on with the show. Here's what it'll look like when you buy it. And we need to remove all of these things except for this one and this one. And we'll need to cut out these plastic bits here. Cutting them out is really easy. You can just make a knife cut with your utility knife here and then just snap them off with uh, needle nose pliers or something. Then a little bit of sandpaper work and it'll be good to go. Okay, now let me show you. The cord won't yank out and actually it supports its weight. And how it does that is you just tie a knot there. The display is upside down just for convenience, and let me give you a better close-up. The display is for voltage, and it's reading 9 right now. The reason that it's 9 volts is because this normally takes 6 C batteries, which are each 1.5 volts. So you just simply multiply 6 times 1.5, and you get 9. There's a little adjustment screw right here, a little teeny tiny thing, and you can twist it until you adjust the voltage to what you want it to be. Now just so that I didn't mess anything up, I attached the outside to an LED light bulb while I was playing with it until I got the voltage right. Now as I've said, I've removed all these clip things for all the batteries, except for the two on the far left, because it just makes a complete circuit that goes there and back. And so you simply attach the positive lead on this thing to where the positive 
lead of the battery would touch here and correspondingly the negative goes to where the negative of a battery would go on that part. On the input side it's really clearly labeled there's a positive there and negative there and they just go to the positive and negative on your battery. The wire that I used here it's all the same it's just some common household 18 gauge no doubt knowing me probably from some old lamp or something. It doesn't take much wiring on this end only a couple of pieces maybe two and a half inches long and they're easy enough to do because you can leave this heat shrink tubing off until you've soldered here and here and then slide it on before this thing goes in place. And so yes it is soldered on this end which isn't too difficult to do. Just use some flux and it's easy on this end because you just have to tighten a couple of screws against the bare wire. And on this end some hot glue will be your friend. It will keep those from going anywhere. Similarly this entire thing has been mounted with hot glue. In other words I filled these cavities here and here with hot glue and the screws were just dangling on the board and I just pressed it down in place and held it until it was hard. Worked pretty nicely. This gets used on the back of an ATV quite a bit so I gave it a little bit of a suspension. Look at this stuff. This is a self-adhesive weather seal product. It's sticky. I should also mention that you can still use the AC in if you want. Nothing that we're doing here with this modification will change the ability to use the regular household plug. One other thing I forgot to mention is you also have to take out these fins that keep the batteries in place. Right there. Back to that heat sink thing, it's included but it's not attached and so you need to paste it on there. Some people use homemade pastes but let me show you what I did. You can just barely make out right here that that's epoxy. The first thing that I did was put a little bit of petroleum jelly on the bottom of this radiator and that kept it from moving and then I just used a toothpick to make a little bandage, just a hinge of epoxy right there. That's all that it takes to hold this on. Is it necessary? I don't think that you even have to use a heat sink, but it helps to keep it cool and especially for this because it's dark and it might be sitting out in the sun, I want to keep it as cool as possible. These may be 80 bucks, but I don't want to buy a new one. How efficient is this? Well, on a battery like this that's probably something like more than 10 years old, uh, I ran it all day in the sun, all day that is around 6 hours. And the other times that I've tried it, it's just been in the shop here running for a few hours at a time. It has not been a problem. It's exceeded any expectation of mine that would have been considered positive way better than I thought it would be. Okay, let me show you about this thing. You have to tinker with this to get it to really work easily. Once again, the fundamental idea for this thing was that I want it to not jiggle loose, but if something yanks it, I don't want it to destroy anything. It does have an up and a down. If you're concerned with maybe accidentally putting it in upside down. Uh, one solution could be to just put a screw here or some other thing that keeps it from going in in this way. I wasn't too concerned with it because I'm going to be the only one that usually used, uses this. This is an easy enough shape to cut out of acrylic glass and the two little holes here are put at a slight angle so that you can make this bend in the wire to keep it from pulling at the connections on the blades. The shape also has a cut here. It's just a real thin cut to accept the blade and I did it on the bandsaw. The solder work here is not my best. 
If you watch this channel frequently, you'd know that I've been meaning to get a new soldering iron, but I still haven't. And so it doesn't have the heat to get this thick of a thing hot. But, oh well, we do what we can. I could always remake it later. What I did here was just drilled a little hole in it, the size necessary to accept some copper wiring. That's just 12 gauge copper wiring that's pressed in and then sanded off flat. Why I did that was so that the blade can get tugged at without it getting bent or destroyed. So what are these copper conductive blades? You could probably use a bunch of different things here, but in this case, I just use some of this stuff. It's just some copper tubing that you can cut a short piece of and smash it flat in the vise. But an alternative to doing that is to use a more common product like this, copper pipe. You can cut a short piece, curl it open like this, pound it flat, and you have some copper sheet. Whatever you do, just use the underside of your battery drill as a guide, as long as you get a thickness that's really close to the blades that are on it, you'll be okay. If you want my two cents, you can't have it, but you could find a couple of pennies of your own and that will also work. Just be sure that your pennies are dated before 1982 because pennies that are before 1982 are solid copper. Okay, that about does it. This is royalty free music. I have to watch what I play or else it'll copyright flag me. You know how it goes. This process should work for just about any battery drill setup. Give it a try. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if this was useful. Let me know if you like royalty free jazz. <laughs> See ya.